Hello and how are you? My name is Mahindo Mubarak and I welcome you to our 22nd lecture of creating a complete inventory management system that is powered by a dashboard or a web dashboard and uh, a mobile application. So without wasting much time, let's get straight into our today's business. So I'll begin our timer. You all know we always do 40 minutes, so I'll start our timer. So in the previous lecture, we stopped at the level whereby we created our basic application and uh, we had started creating our menu here. So when you click here, you have to see your menu. So in the previous lecture, we were at this level, right? So we're going to take it from there uh, to finish this registration screen and also doing other related information or doing other related logic that we shall need on this registration screen. So without wasting much time, let's go straight into today's business. So the f uh, first things first, uh, what we're going to do right now, we're going to finish this registration screen. And uh, you s if you still remember, we were inspired by this um, registration screen, this one that we're inspired with. So it's what we are uh, doing right now. So yesterday I told you that uh, we're going to do what? We're going to begin by adding here our background color. Okay. So this is the one that we're doing. So we're going to begin by adding our, uh, a background color. So we say the background color is going to be our primary color. Okay, it's going to be our primary color. So we're going to have a class where we're going to be saving our colors. So you can see I already have here my class. I called it what? Uh, my colors. I shared this with the basic project that I gave you uh, where I can begin, that one that we're going to begin with, okay? So I gave you this uh, basic what? Uh, this basic project. So in this uh, in this class of colors, it's where we're going to be putting our constant colors. For example, I'm going to create a primary color, maybe and um, a primary dark color, and also uh, accent color. So all the things that I'm going to do, what I'm going to create. So our primary color, you know, our project is uh, a red one. So I can make this. A red color to be my primary color however you can design the one that you want so if i want like a very much more dark of this primary color so i can click there and i look for something that is much more darker than a primary color and then i want also the primary light so a primary color but something that's a little bit lighter so i'll go ahead and do this kind of a tomato green okay let me i don't know which one is good maybe let me just pick that one so these are what these are colors so i'm going to make this background color to have our what our um, our primary i mean our primary light color to be the main background color so to do that okay to do that i'm going just to simply come what is in a primary color so i'm just going to come to our register screen then in background i'm going to give it what uh primary primary light so by doing like this i'll have such kind of a what such kind of a screen so we proceed okay we proceed so the next thing that we're going to do we're going to give it an up bar so i'm going to give it an up bar so i'll just simply come here i already have the, uh, here an up bar so i'll just simply come here and just do up bar and of course you know it's going to take up bar okay so in this up bar uh, i already have it just i'm going to put there and explain it to you so in this up bar i'll put there so we're going to have our system overlay and it's going to have system overlay class and it's going to have a brightness of light and then the status background color of uh, this in this case not going to be gray but it's going to be our primary what our primary light okay so we do this primary light okay or you can even let's try primary and you see uh primary itself okay i think you can do that primary itself i don't know which which kind of red that you want or right, let's see that you're taking that red so and then the the that the the the, the, the up bar height to be zero and then the elevation to be zero so i can have that kind of what that kind of a, a background color so after doing that, the next thing we're going to to create our, our body and our body is going to have a container. So I'll just come here. I give the body a container. It's ready there. And then we're going to give this padding. I mean the, the padding of the container to be symmetric. So I'll come in this container and I give it padding uh, symmetric of um, horizontal 30 and vertical 30. 
So when you do like this, you do not see any change because it is a what? It's a, it's a padding. So go ahead and do that padding. So after giving the padding, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give this uh, container a height of infinity and width of infinity. So height of infinity and width of infinity. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Okay, so height infinity and width infinity. So I'll go ahead and do it. I'll give it that that the container. So after doing that, the next thing we're going to now put a what? Our column. Okay, so we're going to put our column. So we can make it this column scrollable because uh, we may not know how how long the 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 what the the screen how the height of the screen of a user. So let me come here and uh, go ahead and put um, uh, this child. Okay, child. Okay, it's going to be single child scroll view, and then in there it's going to give a child, and we do what? We go ahead and put our what? Our um, our containers. Okay, so uh, we shall have a, a spacer. Okay, now let me. F uh, I want this column to be fixed because. Okay, let me just remove a single child scroll view and you see how it looks like. Because you may not know the height of the screen of a user. Okay, let's just give it. We'll not give a spacer there. All right, the next thing you're going to put there, what? Our logo, okay? We're going to put the logo. So we have not even created the logo for, of the application, but we can create it now. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and put here a column. Okay. Okay, and then give it children, and then we go ahead and put there our logo. Okay, so it's just going to be logo.png. Okay, so let's come here and get some quick logo. So I'll come here to to Google. I mean to to Google search and get a, a logo. So, come at PNG. You can come at images, sorry. And then say red one. Which logo should you take? Just for teaching purposes, I think uh, you should take this one. Okay, let's take this one. So, let me go ahead and save it. All right, let's take this one just to save time. So I'll save this one as logo. Okay, so that is our logo. If I open it, there it is. I can go there and remove background, remove.bg, and then I drag and drop this logo here so the background can be removed. I go ahead and download it. And then uh, it is here. So that's our logo. Let me edit it to make it a perfect square. Okay. That can oh sorry, <laughs> just I get removed it. Okay, that that's okay. Then I'll come here and crop it. However, you can also create your own logo, so I'll crop it. That's going to be our logo. I'll save it, and then I'll go ahead and copy it. 
and then I go to our project our project is here and then I right click though the color is not going to match I right click here and uh, project uh -huh, right click and then say go to assets and uh, images I'm going to put paste it there I see we have a lot of images let me first remove some image that we don't need so open in finder okay so you have a lot of images here that are using for demonstration let me remove them okay they are gone then i'll put the our logo so i'll rename it as logo.png so logo.png so that is our logo for the project all right so i'll come here to our project where is it it's here and change this one to logo.png and then save then you should be able to see that okay so there's some small issue i think i need to restart the application because i've just deleted a few things so let me restart it i hope i hope restart i just run it afresh okay So that's our logo. So I'll come here and remove this background color like this. So that's our logo. So maybe we can make it with uh, of 40, I mean of 100 and height of 100. So I can have our logo there. All right. So I'm going to come here and uh, I do it and I make it a little bit in the middle. So since we have a single child scroll view, so you cannot put their spacer. So I have to put something that is measurable. If I put space, it will go up to infinity. So I have to put something measurable. So let me put size D box and I give it height. So in this height, I'm going to give it according to the height of the device. So I can do use get dot what dot height. Okay. So this will give the height of the device. So I can say maybe divide by three. So it's going to put it there. Or I can say maybe divide by four by four. Yeah, maybe by five. So it will put it there. So if someone has a smaller screen, uh, it will go ahead and do what and make the screen scrollable. Okay. So let me put maybe six. So it can be on top there. All right. Um, so after doing that, uh, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and collect someone's uh, I'm, I'm, and put this field, the, the, the form fields. All right. So I'll go ahead and put the height of uh, 15. So immediately after the logo i'll go ahead and put the height of 15. all right so much of attempts going into the design after doing that i'm going to put there now the text field that's going to collect someone's email we can use this very one but uh, let me use the one that is inspiring us here so we're going to get this text field i'm going to explain it so let me get it here and then put it here and explain everything so when i save we shall have this Okay, this text field so this is just nothing but a text field we'll have a keyboard value uh, of text <clears throat> so i can put here maybe name and then we we put a, a style of this text field which is text field text style and then i make the color to be white so when someone will be typing here the color the text will be white and then i put the decoration and in this input decoration i go ahead and pass the email so I pass the email and then I pass the what the, the 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 label style which is going to become like gray. However, I can use red instead. 
perhaps it's going to be red with that kind of uh, uh, color. So let me put head red, red, head red, red 100. Okay, red 100, and then I put also here red 100. Okay, so that's going to be our what our first input that's going to be collecting the email. So uh, I don't like to repeat myself. So what I can do, I can make this input styling to be in one place and then just be calling it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a a, a function that is going to be getting for me this input style. So let's go ahead and put this function where uh, here in my styles i think we can create a class called my styles or we can use even this my colors okay we can use this my colors to put even our rest of our styles or you can even create a separate uh class for the styles or for the theme so let me go ahead and create a new class a new file i'm going to call it uh, my theme or we can call it custom theme dot that Okay, so in here, we're going to be putting our classes that we're going to be helping to theme, to, be, to, be, to theme our project. For example, you see this one, eh? okay, I'm going just to write it only one time and then I'll just be calling it for the rest of inputs in order we can, so that we, so that we can save a lot of uh, time in, no, for not repeating ourselves. So let me come here to our input, sorry, let me come here to my theme and then I create a class that I'm going to call uh, my theme. Okay, so okay, so the first thing I'm going to so the first thing I'm going to put there is going to be our static, uh, our static what our static, a uh, function that we're going to call maybe input style one. Okay, so it will be accepting only the label, for example, so string label. Okay. And then it will be just returning. So I'll come here in the middle and return the input. Okay. So let me go ahead and import this decoration. I go ahead. So instead of having here email, I'm going to go and put the what? I'm going to put that the what? The label. So this can be our input. So let's go ahead and call this method. Okay. So uh, here. To come to register so instead of repeating ourselves i'll just let's say my theme dot what dot input let me import it my theme and let's say dot input style one so that will save us uh time so the label is going to be first name for example uh first name something like this all right so that's going to be our input a simple input just okay um yep so that's it okay so you can go ahead and add more things, something like um, uh, label style to be white. Uh, that's already there. For example, you can go ahead and put hint, hint text to be, for example, enter, enter the label. So the hint text will be enter the label, and then you can maybe design the hint text styling to be that one, and maybe. This one can be something like 200 to look a little bit thinner. So enter first name, something like this. All right, I think that is okay. Uh, maybe, yeah, so someone will go ahead, come here and put uh, their first name. All right, so that is okay, I think that's okay. So you can proceed to another thing. Uh, that's our input, so you can base on that input to design the remaining of inputs. Only maybe we need to put there the what, the button. All right, let's put the button and then we design the remaining things. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the button. So we shall not need this one. We just need only uh, put the button and then new user sign up. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So the button is what? The button is um, the button is what? Is login. So I'll come and copy this, and I'm going to explain it. Okay. So I'm going to I will explain this. So I'll come here after the input. This one. Okay. After the input, I'll go ahead and paste in there. Okay, and then. So I save. So here I'm going to need a spacer. Okay, 15. Okay, or I can maybe make it uh, 25. All right. So that's going to be there. And now we go ahead and give. Um, make it 15. I think 15 is okay. Not 25. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's okay. So I'll go ahead and give the width to infinity, and then the height can be maybe 
uh, 45 okay and then the elevation elevated button and then this is our styling of our button so um, we can do something like reddish okay something that is uh, reddish for example we can put here our light color my colors dot dot what dot primary if you put their primary to look like that it's much more dark so I can put their light I think uh, primary light I think that is okay so primary light I think that is okay <laughs> I don't know that someone can be able to see that button all right so we come here and uh, uh that is primary light and then maybe primary light you can make it really light uh, so it can be visible kinda remove this constant all right so okay you can see how you design it all right so after doing that um then the next thing i don't want to make this one to be too much circle you can make it maybe five something like that i uh, so here instead of having that login i can say create account all right so i can make this text a little bit bolded okay so I can make here a uh, font weight and make it out a bit bold and then also size uh, font size I can make it a little bit bigger something like that okay so I don't know whether you can make this one just to be white I don't know whether it did not look weird should you make it dark or white that can be up to you all right so that is a uh, create account button all right so um uh, so the next thing now we're going to put the first thing that we're going to collect okay i think that's all uh, maybe we need to put also maybe new user create account so we're going to put already already logged in uh, i mean already have an account uh login something like this so let's put yes our height okay all right so next here we're going to put a uh, new user sign up okay so this is going to be uh already have account already have account login okay so i can make this one maybe 15 all right or maybe zero because it's a button okay so you can pause and look at my button this is just a text button all right, so I can make this text to be white. Okay. All right, so you can go ahead and pause and look at my button there. All right, so that's a simple sign up screen. Uh, what else? Uh, what else? Already have an account? Login. Okay, so maybe you can put there some divider. I don't know i think that's okay i think that is okay all right so now let's go ahead and now put uh, do the real action so i want here when the value is changing i should be getting the value that has changed so we'll come here to our input what is the input it's here text field okay so i'm going to put unchanged on what unchanged so it will give me the value 
and I want to collect this value. So I'm going to create a user that is going that we're going to use to collect uh, this whole data. So I'll just simply come here and then uh, create a user from the user model. I mean logged in user model. Remember I said you create a logged in user model, and then I can just say simply say new user equals to logged in user model. Okay, what's going to be the new? User? All right. So I'll come here to unchanged. I'll go ahead and put first name equals to uh, first name equals to what to uh, value dot first name. Okay, and then I can do go ahead and say dot uh, to string. All right. So that's it. So when you enter here your first name, it will come here to this variable of new user. So if I come here and put Mohindo. I know this is going what in the variable of the new user. All right. So after doing that, let's go ahead and proceed now and add the remaining fields. Okay. So the remaining fields, let's go to our API so it can guide us. So if we come to our API and come to registration and then come to body, so we can be able to see what we need. Okay. We need the first one's first name and the first one's last name and the email and then the phone number. Then the company name, uh, pass and password, and the currency. Okay, uh, so this this first section is the basic information of person. Okay, then this second section is the what? It's the company information, the 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 company name and also the currency. Or maybe we shall just need to collect the. Okay, I think. Let's just collect um okay let's collect all of them uh it's not we can put them also on the same form however you can design a logic of creating them on separate forms so they can be two forms okay so um uh so let's begin uh, let's begin okay uh so let's begin by i've already collected the first name so we're going to the second name all right let's do that so we shall come here and duplicate this guy so I'll duplicate it with its spacer. Okay, so I'll come and copy and then paste there. Okay, so this is going to be a uh, last name. So I'll put here a uh, last name. Okay, so there it is. So maybe the space is too big, you can put there last name like this. So Mohindo, last name Baraka, like that one. Okay, so there we go. I go ahead and proceed uh, to another thing. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to collect the email, okay, the email address. So before email address, email address and phone number, okay, email address and phone number. All right, and then password, okay, and then maybe company name, currency, and then password. Okay, email address, let's go ahead and create email address. Okay, so I'll copy that. Come here, collect email address, so input is going to be email address okay so i'll put here email address and then i make sure that i change this variable to email okay so after doing that the next thing we're going to do we're going to collect the the phone number over this will be optional so uh phone number so we'll put here the keyboard to be phone and then i'll go ahead and say uh phone number and then i put this one to be phone number all right so after doing that uh, the next thing we're going to do is now to phone number it's done we go and collect the company name okay and then the currency and then the password i have company name either you could have done this on two different screens so company name is going to be maybe here do name and then put here uh company name and then put here okay so company name is not on the user whatever so we can create a separate variable for company name so come and create another separate variable for company name because company name is not attached to the user variable company name and also uh, currency Okay, so those two things. All right, so 
here there is uh, company name I'm going to collect it and put it in what in company name like this all right so after doing that the next thing that we're going to do uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, collect the currency that they'll be using okay so let's go ahead and duplicate this and collect the currency So currency okay and then come and put here currency okay then lastly uh, now the password okay that they'll use to log in and then come and put here uh, visible password password and then I come and put here user I mean uh, uh new user dot password all right i think that's enough that's enough so someone will be able to create and if the screen is not enough they can be able to scroll okay so that is so beautiful all right so what we're going to do now uh is to reduce on this height on top because our form is big so i'll come here and reduce this height on top i may not even put spacer so this height on top, I can just put the predefined, I mean some defined value, like 20. That's okay. All right. So, yeah, that's uh, our account creation screen. That's our account creation screen. Uh, however, you can also add maybe password confirmation, re-enter password, something like that. And so, someone, before someone logs in, you first check if their password are the same. Okay, so that's our simple login screen. Uh, if someone is new, they can click on this and then they log in. And we take them to the login screen. Okay, so that's beautiful. Uh, let's go ahead and now start doing the logic of doing what? Of uploading this information to the server. Okay, I think that is okay. Uh, so right now, we are going to now look on the information of creating the, of creating the account. Okay, so let's go ahead and say create account. So when you click on create account, you want to create a, a what our... Um, our function that is going to be uh, working on submitting the account so let's go ahead and look for this button of create account which is um, create this one here so I'm going to put on tap on this button so it is right there on, on press so we're going to do uh, create account method or can say submit submit okay so we'll go ahead and create this method so our method is here so there are a few things that we're going to first validate first of all we're going to check if first name is not null and last name so you first check is first name not null or all those things we check then after checking that they are not null okay let's check one by one the most important things so if and new user first name is equal to null or is empty okay let's say if first name that is what is is empty so if it's empty i go ahead and show an error so i can use this one okay get get the snap bar and then say error and then i put uh first name is required that is a simple a pop up that you can show all right so let's go ahead so if the last name is not there we do go ahead and validate and show last name is required we will show you the better of validating so and then let's try this so if i remove and i remove this one let's wait to validate so you see first name is required that kind of error will show up on top there aha uh -huh. if i come and submit this one here you see last name is First name is required so it cannot allow you so if i come and put here uh, mohindo and then i submit you see last name is required if i put mubarak uh -huh, i submit email address is required okay so is there no, any other way you can customize 
uh, this JTEX because looking weird. If you can check its background color to that, and and uh, I think if you change the background color to that, it will be much more better. Okay, I think that's okay. Uh, let's just change its background color. So I come and put here the background color of this uh, pop up, and then I do the same thing here. All right, so that it should not look like uh, very much same to the warning. So if I come here and try to submit error, um, first name is required. However, you can even change the way the the get the, the what the thing should be displaying. All right, so that is done. So it validate first name, we validate email, we phone number can be optional. A company name is required. So we go ahead and check if uh, company name. I mean, if company name, so go ahead and put here, company name dot length is less than three, then you can say maybe enter valid company name. Uh -huh. So you can go ahead and check check what uh, currency is required. And also maybe lastly, you check the password. Okay. If password is having length less than what? Less than, than six, maybe you can say password must be maybe less than three and then you can say password must have more than three at least three characters at least what at least four characters uh, yeah if it's less than four so that is our simple validation so if you pass this validation you can put here maybe utils i mean i can just put our utils i hope i have toast i don't have it so i can put maybe uh a what a get dot what the snack bar and then say uh success and then say maybe uh good to go okay and then we can make this one to green okay something like that all right so let's go ahead and test and see if we can reach here so i'll put here my first name muhindo uh maybe john last name baluku uh email john at gmail.com you can write even a validator for email uh -huh. and then we go ahead and put our phone number zero seven eight three two ah put the company name test uh you can put maybe app test company and then go ahead and put the currency maybe your gx then password uh four three two one and then uh let me remove these zooms okay now when you try to submit you'll see success great job now we're going to work on the logic of uh submitting okay so this is maybe we can call this one validate validation because the word submit validate form okay so let's go ahead and call this one validation form validate form then i'm going to create a separate method for now for submitting after it has validated submit now let's go ahead and create now a separate method for submit form okay now this method is going to be separately purposely for submitting the form all right so uh it's going to be asynchronous okay right okay so we're going to use uh deal for deal package for sending uh http requests so if you come here uh to our our, our yamo okay if you come here we going to we don't have a package called deal okay i have http but for me i'm very confident with deal so we're going to add another package called Dio. It's not that we're going to use for uh, for sending for sending information. Let me remove this HTTP. We don't need it. Let's go ahead and search for package called Dio. So come here and search for package Dio uh, Flutter. Just search Flutter Dio package. Very popular package and powerful. It's the one that we're going to be using. So come here and click on uh, package. Then you'll be able to see um, uh, the Dio package so that is the deal package we're going to add it to our project so i can 
come here to installing i can either run a command or i can just simply come and and uh, and add this to our package i mean to our pubspec.yaml all of them they are the same so i'll copy this value this do five whatever the way it is there and then i come and put it here to where, where, where we had http i put the do so this do is going to be responsible for sending uh, the, the request to what to the http so okay so after doing that um our time is up uh but let's at least finish uh, submitting okay so after doing that uh i'm going now to import to run pubgate so it can be able to uh import this deal in our project so it has successfully uh run so i can restart my app oh my god i didn't want to restart it it's okay let me restart no problem uh -huh. then you can come here and read the documentation of deal uh whether i'm just going to take you through uh this deal so this is how you send the post okay it's just very simple this is how you send post information okay so i'm going to use this to send our post method all right so let's go ahead and do that so we shall come to our register okay and then we are going to put here the logic of uh, submitting so this response can be just a normal variable and then this do you just import it by pressing alt sorry uh let me import do so to import do okay you just simply say do like this you create do package i mean you create do variable so you first create do variable so come here on top and then create do variable so like that just final do equals to do so you import it and then after you'll be able to just run your http request by just simply say awaiting dio.post and then you can put the link where you're posting and then here you put your what your data this data can be even in what in json format all right let's meet in the next lecture where we're going to send our what our http request uh, the post http request to the server see you in the next lecture god miss